Hey everyone, um, it's been a while since I've done a video on one of my scripts, so I figured I'd update this with my latest iteration of a uh, landing script. Um, I've been working on landing scripts for a while now, and uh, the last iteration that I had, I had a somewhat precision landing script, which was pretty sweet. Um, I but it only worked on the equatorial plane. So assuming that uh, you know the, the moon or whatever body was 2D. It worked pretty well with landing on whatever longitude uh, I was trying to land it on, which was pretty nice. However, this iteration, I've actually added the capability to land on any spot. Um, that is, uh, whatever latitude and longitude. So, um, the script itself doesn't actually calculate the maneuver nodes or anything like that yet. Um, I'm going to work on that later, but for now, um, it this first part here is just a maneuver node I created and I manually picked the landing spot to be somewhat up here uh, uh, two degrees above uh, zero la latitude so you can see that the, it's actually working towards that point um, so uh, I guess to get it started the first thing it's going to do is burn this maneuver node here um, and I'll go into the equation that goes through that because it actually is used in the landing portion as well the equation actually tries to, it, it sets the acceleration of the ship to the delta V. And uh, what that does is it, if the the acceleration here is, you know, above what the throttle is, it'll be at 100%. But whenever it this value gets below um, the throttle's max acceleration, or the ship's max acceleration, the throttle actually follows the acceleration down until um, it asymptotically reaches zero together. So you'll watch when it gets close, this will reduce here. Whenever it gets to point one, it cuts off, and now it goes into the landing section. Um, I'm gonna, whenever this warps over there to closer there, I'm gonna pause it and talk through some of the, the functions of the script, um, just because I know this is a lot to look at. And there's some details that I've added to this script that I didn't have from before, so. Uh, we'll pause it whenever it reaches the time warp. Uh, so you can see now that the landing position is a little bit above latitude up there. Uh, the surface velocity, um, here we we'll pause right here. So this surface velocity is just the velocity of, of the ship uh, in the surface frame. Uh, and it's just projected there just to see where the ship is going. This red uh, vector is the landing vector. so this is the position from the ship to the landing position. Uh, and then this landing position vector is a vector um, which starts at the landing position and then goes straight up to the altitude of the ship. So uh, that means that when you're right above the point, you can see a green arrow right next to you. It's just kind of a helpful uh, show of where you are um, from distance as far as from the ground. Um, so to go through what this actually does is, is uh, what I wanted to do with this in the first place was to make the throttle one continuous function and so it doesn't actually switch between you know burning horizontally and then burning vertically it just does all the calculations together it does have some different ways of calculating the throttle but there's no it's all one one system uh, could be better but this is the way that I found that it works pretty damn well so I just left it as that. Um, the three functions I have that calculate stuff are the S throttle function so that's the function that tries to match the surface velocity with the landing vector in the horizontal plane so if you were to project this you know facing up and down uh, you can see that there's an angle between the landing vector and the surface velocity and uh, it just tries to match this this line with this uh, this red one here, so that's that does a calculation based on delta v, which is a function of uh, how fast the ship is going. Because you, if it's going faster, you need more delta v, and then it runs through that same equation I did for the burning node uh, to do that uh, to actually to match those two. So you can watch that happen here. Um, so burn. Uh, perpendicularly to turn the velocity vector. Again, we there's nothing here that's dictating it needs to slow down or anything, so it's just burning sideways, and you can see how whenever it gets close here, the throttle will go down asymptotically, uh, which is the next part that I wanted to talk about, so I'm going to pause that again. Um, 
the thing that I implemented here is actually a hysteresis function. So if you don't know what a hysteresis function is, here's a picture of one. Um, so hysteresis lets you uh, kind of set a toggle to where your your function transitions. So this would be a, a pretty much a boolean hysteresis. So what happens here is like let's say you had your t is value two, and your value was negative one and it was increasing. Whenever it hits the 2, normally it would just go up to true and then continue on. And then same thing if it was coming from true, it would hit t, which is 2. So if it was 3, then it went to 2. And then at 2, it would transition to false and then continue on. The problem with this is whenever I'm running with, with the throttle, of course, this is KOS and you know computers aren't perfect. Whenever the throttle will kick on, the accelerations get all jumbled up, so the throttle will actually oscillate between. Uh, right now, I have it set to 75%. So if I did that, it would be, you know, it would come up, hit 75%, turn the throttle on to 75%, and then because of the calculations, it says, oh, we actually need 74, and then it'll turn off, and then turn on, and turn off. So it, it does a lot of toggling, which I don't like. So what I created instead was a, a hysteresis function, and uh, that's in my code, which you guys can can look at in the description later but um, I have the hysteresis now set to, to between 75% and 1% so whenever it hits 75% it'll turn on the throttle and then whenever it um, and then it doesn't turn off again until it reaches 1% throttle then it turns back off uh, and you can see how that's functioning here whenever I go into the, the horizontal section um, so that's that um, and whenever I do the uh, the horizontal section and the vertical section, they both use the same equations. Um, so I can discuss that as it's happening here. Um, the equation that it uses is it calculates the Vmax V and the Vh, the Vmax H. These are the values that the ship can be traveling at, or the speeds at which it could be traveling at. If you were to do a full throttle burn, um, it will stop right at the landing position. So this is just a suicide burn calculation, but instead of burning, trying to figure out your your throttle that you need to be at, it calculates the speed. The reason why I do that is because then I can put a, a control loop on it. So this is just a PD loop uh, between the V max H and the V speed H and tries to match those two. If it does match 100%, it will actually be you know at 100% throttle. So I actually have a critically damp system here so that it doesn't actually overshoot the 100% because of course if you're coming down and you are you need a more than 100% throttle you're gonna crash so I want it to be critically damp so it doesn't ever do that and then it's also just a nice thing to that you're not ever passing the landing position here uh, so that's how that works you can see it working again whenever you get to the vertical speed uh, but for now um, that's this is calculating the horizontal section, the side section, and the vertical section all as different values. Whenever the ground speed drops below 10%, it switches to the follow mode, or not 10%, 10 meters per second. It switches to follow mode. In the follow mode, um, it it takes the surface velocity and tries to match it along the landing position vector. So they're both vectors, right? So it just takes the, the difference here, like the very small difference here, and creates a, a throttle based on that difference and tries to make sure that they're facing the same direction. What that will do is make sure that you're always going towards the landing position, which means you could eventually, if they're both aligned perfectly, you'll just be you know falling straight down towards that landing position. Um, so again, the velocity vector uh, acceleration is increasing and whenever you see this go above 75% the hysteresis will turn on to true your throttle will turn on and you'll start burning uh, in this section whenever it just does a, the same thing it did before however whenever it goes below the touchdown speed which I designated as 5 per, or five meters per second it'll switch to a um, just to cancel out the velocity the the gravity acceleration and tries to match with five per five meters per second, and then it touches down and then it turns the SAA on or SAS to you know make sure it doesn't tumble over and the program is done. 
Uh, it's kind of annoying that it bounces here. I don't like that it bounces, but I'm, you know, up until this point, it's been no problem. This is as close as you can get. If I needed it to land perfectly, I'd, I'd try, but I don't currently need it to. So, um, yeah, that's that's pretty much how everything works here. If uh, you have any any questions or anything like that, please uh, let me know. Again, the code will be in the the um, in the description. You can just check it out there.